Hello, welcome back to my vlog. Um, today we're going to be looking at the title Hearing God's Voice. And I've been doing, this is the second of four where I'm talking about spiritual practices that will help you with your worship leading, but also if you're a Christian, it will help you in your walk with God in general. And um, I, I just wondered, have you ever been in a conversation where you are talking to someone, or rather they're just talking at you, and all you're doing in your head is trying to work out how you can get away from that conversation? Like, I've been in loads of those, and I don't know about you, but when it comes to my friendships, I don't want to be found to be the only one talking. And in the same way, I think that's true for our relationship with God, that when we pray and we speak back to God, that is our way of communicating to Him. But actually, He's wanting to communicate back with us. And I want my relationship with Him to be two-way. A lot of the time in, in my life, I've found that key decisions have come from actually pausing and learning to listen to His voice rather than just praying my own prayers. And a lot of my bad decisions have come when I haven't put that thing in place. In fact, in leading the worship team here at C3, I found that the best decisions I've made um, in terms of leadership and team and building um, a worshiping team have come from that place of hearing him speak. So how do we do it? Well, I believe that God speaks in lots of different ways and I'm just gonna list a few things. He, I believe he speaks through the Bible. I believe he speaks through words, key words and phrases. I believe he speaks through peace, like just sensing an incredible engulfing peace in, in your life. Um, I believe he speaks through pictures and dreams and visions, not the sort of dreams that you have where there's like a giant cheese running around the room chasing after you, but the sort of dream that you wake up and you think, wow, that was uncanny or that felt like I need to process this a little bit more. I remember a time a few years ago when I was running out of the door of my flat um, with a guitar in hand, ready to um, set up for Sunday morning. And it was early, it was about 7 a.m. I was probably running two minutes late. And um, I just had this sense that I should stop and run back up the stairs and grab another guitar. Now, to be honest with you, this is just really annoying because I was already a little bit late. But this prompting wouldn't stop. And so rather than ignoring it, I decided, right, I'm gonna go with this and I'm just gonna pick up my other guitar. It's not gonna take long, it's not gonna take much effort. Grabbed the guitar, ran out, thought nothing more of it until I started playing the first set in the first service. So I started playing that song and guess what happened? I break a string. And um, it was no issue because there was another guitar in hand. I just grabbed it, the one that I picked up earlier and um, started playing. Now this is a really, really silly, pointless example, but it has a purpose. I believe God is interested in hearing and in speaking to us in the small things as well as in the, the giant decision-making kind of things. And I think by involving God in the small things of life, you are far easier and um, far better equipped to be able to hear Him when it comes to the crunch time, the decision-making things that are going to change your life. Um, so I want to set you a little challenge. There's a guy in the Old Testament of the Bible called Samuel, and he had a mentor, kind of boss figure, when he was a kid. He lived in the temple, and his boss was Eli, the priest. And Eli was asleep, and one night Samuel thought that he heard Eli calling him, Samuel, Samuel. So he went up, woke up Eli and said, Eli, you spoke to me, what do you want? Eli was like, I didn't speak to you, go back to bed. This happened a second time, Samuel, Samuel. And so Samuel woke up Eli again and said, look, you spoke to me. And by the third time this happened, Eli realized this was gonna keep happening until he actually gave the kid a strategy. So he said to him, next time you hear this voice, I want you to go and say, speak God, for I'm listening. Your servant's listening. And so Samuel went and did that. And the response was that God started to speak to him about specific things to do with Israel. Now my challenge for you is this, if you struggle to hear God's voice or you're not sure whether you do or you don't, to actually set aside five minutes a day and pause and say, God, speak, because I'm listening. Now you may sense nothing, you may hear nothing, but even in the act of pausing, you're giving room for God to speak. And if you do that long enough, you'll start to learn the sort of way that God speaks to you and begin to hear his voice. 
Now, the, it, immediately, the moment you do it, I can guarantee almost that you're going to have 101 thoughts suddenly go around your, your mind. If, if they come in, just just try and shut them out or just write a list of all the things that come into your head and just leave it so that you've thought through those things and refocus your mind into listening into God. So I hope that kind of challenges you and encourages you a little bit. And if you're a worship leader, you'll find that these little promptings really, really aid you in the way that you lead worship in church. So I hope it encourages you and I'll see you next time.